thank you uh, everyone for being here this morning, being part of this very significant celebration for our city. This is uh, the day that Canberra grows up, that our public transport system uh, improves to the point uh, of being befitting of a city of nearly half a million people. As we continue to grow, uh, Canberra's transport needs will also grow. It's why it's important that we are investing in transport infrastructure now to get ahead of that population growth so that we don't go down the path of other Australian cities where congestion and lost time becomes a really significant drag on city economies and on people's lifestyles. Canberra is the world's most livable city and it is so because of investment in transport infrastructure and this is another great practical example uh, of how we can make it easier to move around our city. It's obviously a clear and fundamental commitment that we took to the 2016 ACT election that we have delivered on. We were very clear uh, in that campaign and indeed in 2012 uh, that this was a priority uh, for the ACT Labor government. Uh, there were many sceptics, many critics along the way, but uh, we're delighted to be here today uh, to celebrate with the Canberra community of the first stage of my rail. And of course, attention will now turn through this federal election campaign uh, to the second stage. Uh, and there's a clear opportunity uh, with a change of federal government, uh, with a supportive federal government to support us to deliver a second stage of my rail. Now, I'm convinced now that each subsequent territory election from this point on uh, should and will be a contest about how this network will be expanded. Uh, but we're delighted, Meg and I, to be here today uh, to fulfil the promise we took to the 2016 election. It's a great day for Canberra, it's a great day uh, for public transport, uh, and it's, I think, a wonderful opportunity to celebrate uh, what has been uh, a couple of years of construction and disruption, but a project that has gone incredibly smoothly with it uh, with similar projects in other cities. So, I said the other day, you don't need to look too far from here, just up the Hume Highway, uh, to see how challenging these sorts of major projects can be for cities. And I would contrast how this project has gone uh, compared to what we've seen uh, in the city. Uh, and it's all credit to the Canberra Metro team, to the Transport Canberra team. Uh, the project that we want all of those uh, behind the scenes who've worked for years on this project. It's been many decades uh, in the making. Politicking around this has gone on for decades. Part of the original plan for the city, so the fact that it's taken 100 years to deliver does say something about the pace of change in Canberra at times. We're really pleased to be here today to celebrate this. I'd like to welcome uh, to uh, say a few words now, Peter uh, Fitzharris. Everyone today has a wonderful time. 
managed to meet some, uh, some fellow Canberrans on the night round. and the, the Chief Minister have both um, said that this network has avoided many of the problems of Sydney that it's been well delivered. Um, but having said that, just uh, this morning I've spoken with a couple of businesses. Um, they say they're very excited that this day has come, that uh, this is a, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, if you like, but it has been a difficult journey to, to this point and, and they've faced nearly going under. Understand that uh, it's very difficult to build an infrastructure project of this scale without some disruption. Uh, the team's worked incredibly hard to minimise that, uh, and we understand uh, and thank uh, those businesses and indeed all Canberra's for their patience during the construction uh, But again, I contrast our experience uh, with that that's uh, going on just a few hundred kilometres up the road where projects are uh, running late, uh, very late, over budget. Yes, this was a, this is the biggest single transport infrastructure project undertaken in the territory. It's the single largest infrastructure project ever undertaken by a territory government. So it's never going to be disruption free, uh, but it has gone incredibly smoothly. Uh, and we should be very proud as a community uh, that not only have we been able to attract some of the best talent from around the country and around the world that wanted to work on this project, been delivered in a way that has minimised as much as possible uh, disruption to businesses uh, and to the community. It's impossible to, to avoid any disruption, uh, but we work really hard and work closely with the local business community. And yes, and today I hope will be a booming trading day for all of the businesses here in Gungahl and in Civic and along the corridor. And there is a very bright future ahead now that this infrastructure has been built. More and more people can utilise it. As our city's population continues to grow, uh, patronage will grow uh, and has been custom uh, for the businesses uh, along the Royal Mail Road. That's uh, it's part of a growing city and a growing economy. But at some point, you have to build this infrastructure. Uh, and there was a very clear choice in 2012 and 2016 that whether we would do this or not, people of Canberra spoke loud and clear. We've delivered upon that promise. Uh, and now we look forward uh, to expanding this network. And I think it is important uh, for our city's long term future. It is about planning for the future. There's a lot of criticism, rightly, in Australian politics now that governments don't think long term. That there's too much bickering, short term political decision making, and no one is thinking for the longer term. Well, I want to put the ACT up as a marked contrast from that style of governance that style of politics. And we have been very clear with our plans. We've gone to multiple elections seeking a mandate. Uh, today is delivered on that We look forward to a change of federal government next month and we'll see the next stage of my will be able to progress more quickly with a real financial commitment from Bill Shortman. Uh, and importantly, support from the Commonwealth to be able to deliver the project. That is very, very important. Stage uh, on this uh, But of course, as Megan has indicated, uh, 
from the 29th of April. All of the buses that were running down this transport corridor get to be redeployed uh, across the bus network so that the rest of Canberra who aren't part of State 1 of Line Rail will get a better and more frequent bus service because all of those uh, million kilometres of bus travel are redistributed throughout uh, the ACT, which gives more frequent travel. We listen to what uh, people have wanted from their public transport network uh, and delivering that. And that again was another key commitment that we took in the 2016 election. Reinforcing that uh, things you say you will do at elections, you should do during the parliamentary term. One to get multiple steps in assessment uh, of a project, uh, and undoubtedly a successful procurement phase, a successful construction phase, operationalising uh, you know, the single largest transport infrastructure project ever undertaken by the Territory Government. Yes, no, that there are a series of very important and significant milestones. Uh, patronage, of course, will be another, uh, another measure. Increased patronage across the entire public transport system as well. So we need to look at uh, what the alternative would have meant, and it's the congestion that's foregone. The fact that uh, we will have the capacity in our city's transport system to accommodate future population growth. That's the other thing. You need to look at what, you know, what's the counterfactual, what would have been the alternative position. Uh, had the election result in 2016 gone a different way, what we would have seen is more gridlock, more congestion uh, on Canberra's road network because we wouldn't have built this significant congestion bus and transport infrastructure. They were the choices that the people of Canberra faced in 2016. Uh, it was no surprise to everyone that I was delighted with the choice people made in 2016. Uh, and let me be clear that uh, every territory election from here on in should be, and the, the public should be, putting the pressure uh, on the government of the day and the opposition party at the time uh, to what further commitment they will make uh, to expand the public transport infrastructure in our city. Because we're going to keep on growing, our population will continue to grow, and we will need to build that infrastructure in order to ensure that the great thing about our city, you can move about it easily, get to almost anywhere you want inside 15 or 20 minutes, remains part of our lifestyle. That will set us apart from Sydney and Melbourne and other growing cities. We've got to invest in transport infrastructure. Not that many governments are doing it. Not that many governments have shown, I guess, the courage to take this to multiple elections. That's what we're doing. Are you expecting that the Canberra Liberals will perhaps stop opposing light rail and instead look to promising to be the best to deliver the, the next stages? Well, look, I think uh, if past behaviour is the best predictor of future behaviour, uh, they have been relentlessly negative uh, about most things in this city uh, for most of the time that I've been involved in territory politics. Uh, so I'm not expecting uh, a massive about-face from them. They're already uh, indicating uh, cynicism and being critical uh, of this first stage. Uh, and the changes to the transport network. So I think that pattern of behaviour will continue. Uh, and people would have to be pretty gullible to believe that the opposition leader, uh, who was so vehemently opposed to this project, who was going to rip up the contracts uh, and spend hundreds of millions of dollars on nothing, would suddenly have a bad place at this point. So no, they are parked firmly uh, in the negative hand on most issues. Conservative, backwards looking, the most conservative branch of the Liberal Party in the country in the most progressive jurisdiction in Australia. It just doesn't work. <laughs> well, look, that will be some time in the next uh, ACT parliamentary term, but it will be able to move more quickly uh, to the procurement of the second stage of White Rails and the financial commitment from the offshore, but also the support of a federal government to work through uh, the detailed planning studies. As we know, we need the support of both the House of Representatives and the Senate to approve the detailed route for the second stage. Uh, that will require political support. Uh, clearly, if there's a Labor majority in the House of Reps and they form government, then that puts them in the way through that House. We've also got to get this through the Senate as well. So uh, our partners, the Greens Party, would be very important there, but I suspect there will also be a cross-bench that will need convincing if the Liberals continue their opposition to public transport.
providing as much information as we can. So yes, uh, there will be changes uh, and we will have uh, customer service officers both in Canberra Metro and Transport Canberra deployed to all our interchanges uh, in about 10 days time for the launch of the new bus uh, One of the things we've done is made ticketing really easy. So your MyWay card, which you currently use on the bus, uh, you can use your MyWay card on light rail and travel seamlessly throughout the network. Uh, and we have uh, begun plans to transition to a new ticketing system uh, in the future. So awareness raising, um, and today is an opportunity uh, for people to experience light rail, uh, and we hope as many people as possible to take that opportunity. But I do think it will be really be in six months' time that we have a measure of patronage right across the whole new network. Uh, but what we've seen uh, in 2016, the ACT had two rapidly bus services. Uh, today we have four, um, and in ten days' time we have ten rapid transport services: one by rail and nine rapid bus services right across the city, uh, from from Tuggeranong uh, to Chandra to Gowland, Woden, and then moving along the Wye Valley. So this is a massive increase in public transport. When we introduced the two new rapid services last year, uh, in 2017, uh, the black rapid and the green rapid, we've seen patronage go up quite significantly on those bus services. The other thing about our new bus network is that it will be the same number Monday uh, through Sunday. It will take the same route and there will be significantly more buses every evening and over the course of the week. So uh, this massive investment in public transport on a seven day a week network, more services at night, I think people will start to see the benefit of that, they will start to use it, uh, and we'll do as much education and awareness raising as we can. Thank you. Thank you.